Akil, we can start. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Before You Conclude lecture series of Jammu and Kashmir Policy Institute, a source of exhaustive information that will cover nuanced perspectives on international affairs. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, I'll be kicking things off uh, before turning it to our Ms. Jigyasa, our facilitator for uh, today's virtu virtual event. Uh, uh, we are really excited to have everyone here today for what we find to be a really interesting discussion on gender disparity in electoral politics of South Asia. Uh, before we get started, I'll, uh, I'll give a big background uh, on before you conclude lecture series and introduce our speaker. The monthly online one-hour session series before you conclude lecture series is aimed at fostering well-informed and uh, uh, erudite opinions on recent international developments and emerging debates. Uh, it focuses on analyzing issues in the sphere of geopolitics, political economy, traditional and non-traditional security threats, foreign policy, neighbor, neighbor, neighborhood relations, and broadly covering issues related to climate, uh, migration and uh, refugees and gender. The session will invite academicians, researchers, and uh, subject experts to deliver a 50 minute lecture followed by a 15 minutes Q&A session to provide a space for the audience to ask their questions and queries. So, so uh, in this context, uh, JK Policy Institute brings to a lecture uh, on uh, gender disparity in electoral politics of South Asia. And today uh, we have with us uh, Rekha Chaudhary, uh, who is the former professor of political science, University of Jammu. Uh, she, she's working on various issues related to Jammu and Kashmir, particularly those uh, related to uh, identity politics, democracy, federalism, conflict, and peace. Her major publications include uh, competitive politics in the shadow of separatism uh, uh, and uh, Jammu and Kashmir politics of identity and separatism. She has been a Commonwealth uh, Queen Elizabeth House University of Oxford uh, uh, Commonwealth Fellow. Uh, she has uh, she has been also a Fulbright Scholar at School of Advanced International Studies, John Hopkins University. Uh, uh, and also uh, Indian Council of Social uh, Science Research National Fellow and Fellow of Indian Institute of Advanced Studies. Uh, on behalf of the entire team of JKPI, I welcome you tonight. Thank you very much for uh, taking time from your busy schedule uh, to be here with us today. Uh, and uh, that's all from me. I'll uh, hand you over to my colleague, uh, Mr. Gyasa, who will take it from here. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Akhil. And without, me, without taking much time, uh, I will simply go again with the entire format. So uh, just after me, I'll be passing on to mentor to Rekha Ma'am and she'll be delivering the lecture. And after that, there would be a dedicated Q&A session in, would be, in which we would take up all the questions that we were gonna receive on our Facebook platform. And uh, that would be followed by a closing remark from one of my colleagues. Uh, and with these remarks, I would like to hand over the mentor to Rekha Ma'am. A very warm welcome to you, Ma'am, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Jigya, sir. And I'm very thankful to the JK Policy Institute for inviting me for uh, speaking uh, on a topic of uh, my interest. Uh, I want to talk about uh, why there is gender disparity so far as electoral politics in South Asia is concerned. Uh, why I've chosen South, South Asia is because uh, South Asia has got certain, in context of gender, there's a, almost a continuity, continuity of the patriarchal structure, although, uh, as we know, each country within South Asia is quite diverse and uh, patriarchy takes uh, diverse forms, uh, but at the same time, there are certain constants, the similarities, and because of which means I find that if women uh, are not able to be visible in electoral politics, especially in the decision-making positions, then uh, there's something to do with patriarchy. So in order to understand that why 
uh, women are missing. I use Amartya Sen's uh, terminology that missing women, although he has used it in terms of uh, uh, lower sex ratio, but even in uh, the in terms of decision making in electoral politics, I'll I'll rather say the electoral politics in India when it comes to the question of power and uh, higher positions, it is controlled by men, and uh, the presence of women is very quite insignificant. When we talk about democracies and when we talk about electoral democracy, uh, a question which is important for us to understand: democracy cannot be considered to be fully participatory and a fully democratic system unless uh, we say the women who form half the population almost, uh, if they are not represented in the decision-making positions. And this is uh, true of almost all the South Asian countries that with the exception of uh, now Nepal, which has by reservation 33% uh, uh, positions reserved for women in the legislature, uh, in other countries, the position is quite dismal. Uh, Pakistan has 20% uh, women, uh, but again, uh, also mainly because of nominated uh, women members as well as reserved uh, seats for women. Um, but there are countries which have only 5% of participation of women in the, in the legislature. India has got the highest number at present in 2019 parliament. India has got the highest number since 1951, the first general election. And the highest number now is 14%, which means that for every 100 uh, members of parliament, uh, there are only 14 women. Uh, so, uh, which is a dismal position. And um, uh, it's, it's, it's not, I means when we are assessing democracy from various perspectives, then uh, it becomes a very important element to assess it from this perspective also that where are half the women, where are the missing women, why the women are missing uh, when it comes to the, to the, to the um, lawmaking, highest positions of lawmaking. And the, 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 the position in case of India, when we talk, the position is replicated and the same is true for other uh, uh, federal systems as well. The position at the national level is replicated at the at the at the, uh, at the local state level as well. Uh, so it's almost the similar position. Uh, it's a it's a it's a paradox also. It means when we come talk of women in electoral politics, it's a paradox. Paradox because uh, when we talk about the developed democracies, for example, United States of America. United States of America is still waiting for the first women president. It means they will say that they have they were waiting for a first black president and first women president. They had a black president very recently, but they still have not got their first women president. Uh, interestingly, South Asian countries, almost each one of them has, if most of them have had women as head of women as head of the states. Uh, this was uh, there in uh, in Sri Lanka. This was there. This is there in um, Bangladesh. This has been there in Pakistan, in in India. So it's a paradox that uh, India did achieve what the uh, the best of the democracies could not achieve, having women as the head of the state. So uh, th so this is a paradox that when uh, South Asian countries and many of them uh, they had they had no such inhibition uh, like in the western countries that you having a woman in those positions uh, there was no inhibition at all and women have been very uh, happily accepted as as the heads of the state as as the ministers as women in position of power they have been accepted and, uh, and now this is this is the norm that women can be the heads of the state they can be as the prime ministers as the, as the presidents so they can be there, but um, at the same time, uh, having a woman head of the state does not translate into having women in the critical as a critical mass where they would be represented in the in the lawmaking uh, bodies and in the in the executive uh, positions in the government in the as ministers in such critical numbers that, that they can be having their influence 
so far as 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 uh, the the issues of women are concerned are uh, are uh, increasing the number of women means we can we can just talk about uh, about india and see what is the situation so far as women's uh, representation and reservation for women um, in in, in uh, at the parliament level is concerned that that reflects the reflects the the context of patriarchy in the sense that uh, it's very interesting that when we had uh, 33% reservation for women in the panchayats this happened very silently people were not aware the political class in india was not aware that uh, uh, that this is going to be such a radical step that 33% of the seats will be given to to women in the panchayats at all the three layers of the panchayat so this was this was just introduced and uh, this has had a very uh, very i would say uh, and i'll be talking about it in details this has had a very interesting uh, uh, outcome of the reservation for women in panchayats but when it came to uh, because that was the commitment uh, because this started with the rajiv gandhi's government this was the commitment of the congress government and this has been the commitment of almost every political party including the uh, bjp that uh, 33% reservation would be given to women in the in the state legislatures as well as in the union parliament uh you know what has happened that the bill has been introduced a number of times in the parliament and every time one thing which has come to be seen is that despite their ideological and political differences the political parties have united on this issue that they have stalled very successfully they have stalled the reservation for women in the state legislature and union parliament the reason is means you can see the how the patriarchy is operating i see politics as a resource as a very very important resource in case of south asian countries politics is a very important resource and uh, as it happens in patriarchy uh, means that is the way i define patriarchy patriarchy means which is a society in which there is a control of men control Uh, over the resources and control over women, and uh, means men control most of the resources, and men also control women. Or women are under control. So, uh, and I see politics as a very very important resource because politics is a means for number of things. Politics is a means for for holding uh, uh, political power. politics is a means for holding uh, important significant positions it's also a means for for um, for in case of india people join politics for 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 earning money it's it's a almost a career it's a, it's, a, it's a one of the most important resource within the south asian countries not only in india it's it's everywhere it's an important resource and uh, the case of uh, reservation 33% reservation and how it has been stalled by um, by political parties across the board that clearly reflects that how uh, for, it firstly reflects that how the politics is in the control of men at at this point of time means when we say that there are 86 uh, men for every 14 women Uh, for every hundred uh, members of parliament, in case of India, um, in case of Pakistan, there are eighty to twenty. So, in in South Asian countries, they say that politics is first of all monopolized, controlled by men. So, how do how do these fourteen women or twenty women who are part of the legislature? How are they seen? They are just seen like okay, they are there. they are there even as significant members they are there they assert their power some of them become very very powerful for example mrs indira gandhi was a, is a still a role model of a leader how a leader should behave when she is seen as a most charismatic leader and there are other women for example in bangladesh or in pakistan benazir bhutto has been seen as a role model of a political leader um a similar thing about bangladesh means these women are seen as the role models but uh, as as a whole the group of women the collective of women the 14 women at 20 women are five women within this 100 uh, number these women are seen just a concession they are there 
they are there because the men have allowed them a space and they they are there and some of them become very very powerful uh, not only at uh, the national level even at the state level for example we have seen very very strong women um, chief ministers like jay lalita or we have mamta benerji right now and we have very various other um, examples so these women once they are in the position of power they are seen as individuals they are strong individuals they are strong women leaders um, and uh, even their gender becomes invisible once 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 they are there in that position of power i do not think that anybody saw mrs indira gandhi as women prime minister she was seen as a prime minister and in fact she was seen as means in terms of again patriarchal terms she was defined the man uh, in sometimes like the only man in the cabinet uh, the the woman who acts like a man uh, so having women in that position is not acceptable and when you define a woman as a man means once she she be, she becomes uh, uh, she asserts her power then 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 she is seen as equivalent to man means it's it's not considered that a woman and a powerful woman as woman be a politician and, and accept it so first thing is that women uh, the 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 politics is monopolized by men they outnumber significantly in relation to women then they let the women be there just because they are very small number but when there is a possibility of women uh acquiring a, a a critical mass then they 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 have uh, very successfully they have stalled the process of having them uh, as as uh, and and not not and, and and one have one has to go into this whole history of how many times this reservation bill has been introduced how many excuses have been given by the political party then this is this is interesting that almost every political party has in the manifesto and every time a manifesto is uh, repeated every time this provision is there that uh, the party will fight for uh, 33% reservation and uh, five years come and go and this this never uh, comes uh, this never translates into reality uh the intention of 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 the of the political class means whether they really would want women to be there that intention becomes clear in so many ways for example we can say that okay political parties have been taking a position okay if 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 they cannot they cannot have that bill uh, passed in the parliament they can have uh, they can start with having that reservation within the party within the party some political parties like bjp would say like whether we will give 33% candidature to 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 women or some other parties would do that but then it will be done in such a way that not in, not necessarily the the seats are the, the nominations are distributed in such a manner that women get elected in that high number so generally uh, women women are given those seats for which i mean the the winability chance of the party might be quite be other than some some seats uh, generally women, women there there are many seats where where they may not be able to win so uh, i'm just saying the intention of the political class and i'm when i'm talking of intention of the political class i'm talking across the board i'm saying all the political parties despite uh, in spite of the political ideological differences and i'm saying across the countries means it's not only the country, uh, the question of india this is across uh, other countries also india pakistan bangladesh means it's it's a it's a it's a monopoly politics is a monopoly of men and i have said that the reason is that politics is a, the one of the most important resource and in a patriarchy the resources are controlled by men and that is what defines a patriarchy and second thing is that which defines a patriarchy is that that there is a control over women means the second definition is not only that because patriarchy operates the globally when we say that the globally the resources of the world are controlled by men uh, and uh, in case of south asia much more so uh although we'll see that women are as there as entrepreneurs women are there as 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 scientists women are there in many positions but generally when it comes to the 
to, to, to the collective. Individually, women have achieved, individually, women have been able to prove their mantle, but, but when it comes to collective, collectively, women uh, do not have the resources. The resources are collectively controlled by men much more than women. Uh, second, I'm saying is that the patriarchy is defined by the, the context that women are themselves controlled. In the sense like that we see and here we find that there is a there is a similarity in the South Asian societies that uh, we, 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 we uh, share that culture in which uh, despite the fact that there has been a modernization means there has been uh, we can compare our again I'll take the example of India and say that we can compare our situation 100 years earlier and 100 years now that 100 years back that we were killing our uh, girls after they were born. They were seen as liabilities and boys were seen as, an, as assets. And 100 years later, we still see the girls as liability and the boys as asset. And we can just point to the, um, uh, to the sex ratio and see the, the, the decimal situation so far sex ratio is concerned. And we see that, that we are killing the girl before she is born. So there is a modernization, there is a use of technology. Uh, we have become modernized. In fact, we say the patriarchy itself has been modernized. Uh, women is still seen as a liability and uh, also culturally, irrespective of religious differences, irrespective of culture, irrespective of linguistic, ethnic differences, we see that women is seen to be something uh, to be under control. And when women is under control, she is constantly, she is not an individual. Means again, we have all the countries over here, which are democracies, which have got the written constitutions. Every constitution is talking about the rights. We are talking about universal rights. We are talking about the fundamental rights, the basic rights, the freedoms, the, the, the basic rights. Uh, every country has those rights and formally, uh, constitutionally, women are given as many rights as men and formally, constitutionally, there is no difference between men and women. But what still is the difference is that women, despite the rights that she is, she has got by the constitution, women is still is, 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 uh, is, is not a citizen. Women means a citizen is a right bearing citizen by definition. A, a person is a citizen when the citizen enjoys the rights given to the, the, that person by the constitution, by the law. In case of uh, South Asian countries, despite the law giving the rights to, to, to women, equal rights, women are still not the citizens because to be citizen, it means first of all that they should be enjoying those rights equally, the, all the rights, the right of freedom, right of movement, right of uh, controlling their body, controlling their fertility, controlling um, their choices, controlling their uh, opinions, uh, they may not, they do not have those, those, those things because it's, it's, a, it's because we, know, we all know it, I do not need to explain it, it's very common knowledge in South Asia that uh, legally and constitutionally, even if the, if the, if the uh, rights are given, they do not get necessarily translated uh, because of the social um, uh, conditions. Uh, so, so because of this thing, we find that uh, women are still not the citizens and uh, uh, they, and on the contrary, they are, they are under the gaze, they are under, under control of so many kinds. Means the gaze is, is, is such, a, such an important concept to explain as to what happens in case of when, when it's, it's, it's a question of women enjoying any kind of right. Because it's the gaze uh, which, which is very, 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 very uh, invisible gaze, but women herself is conscious of that gaze all the time. Women is socialized into, into her limits and into her uh, what she can or she cannot do, what she's expected, what is an essential woman. Means every woman is told this is the essence of being a woman. And if she is to be accepted, if she has to be approved by the society, then she has to live, she has to, to be behaving within the, those limits. Uh, how, does, how does it happen is that like, and I, again, I do not need to explain is that, uh, what is the meaning of control over women? Uh, of course, in certain cases, we find that even men are 
control. For example, the choice of marriage, I can say, even for men, um, the, 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 the choice may not be for the individual, but we really know when it comes to women, women, whether she should be, um, what kind of education, whether she should be, whether she should be following a career after education, uh, whether 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 she should when when it comes a, becomes a case of uh, uh, choosing between uh, family and career when it comes to the, the two spouses and in case of one of the spouses has to take care of the children who has are these are the very these are the very urban middle class examples but generally we know that how many controls operate upon women and I said that in this, these controls do not come from anywhere outside. These are inculcated into the very personality of women. Means, uh, I'll just uh, use a concept uh, used by Foucault, the French philosopher. He says that uh, domination becomes very easy if the subject of domination becomes the agent of her own domination. And in case, in this case of exercising the social controls, we know that uh, most of the most of the subjugation of women becomes easier because women themselves become the agents of their own domination. They 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 not only reproduce the structure of controls, but they are further reinforcing those those controls and uh, in many ways. Uh, so. Uh, in such a situation where, where there is a situation of control over women, I like to introduce another concept that is a gender division of roles. Means, uh, and that, that again is something which happens across the countries in South Asia, that there is a gender division of roles. We, we say that there, because when we have a concept of an essential woman, a woman whose essence is to be a woman according to certain expected do's and don'ts. So, uh, this essential woman has to behave according to the gender division of roles. And in that gender division of roles, one of the uh, basic division is, uh, is like uh, the public space and the private space. Women's space, essential space, is not that women can, may not be doing things other than, than, than uh, in the private space, but a sense by which women would be judged and approved is the private space. And the sense by which man would be judged and approved and his, uh, his, uh, his basic role is seen is in the public space. So this distinction, I say again, this distinction is again, very much accepted, very much uh, reinforced and uh, um, this, 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 is, this, this is reproduced all the time. That, Women's space is the private space and men's space is the, is the public space. How does it, it apply in politics? I'll just be um, talking about this in a moment. But right now we have to see that, uh, and the, I just want to make it very clear that even if women may be educated, women may be taking up the, uh, the, the jobs outside the private space, they might be in the public space, I said they would be approved and judged basically in terms to their essential roles where they are seen as women, that is in terms of their relationship with the family, whether they are good mothers, whether they're taking care of the family, uh, doesn't matter whether they are doing jobs and the jobs which are, which are in the public space, but their essence is to be within the private space. So I just give that example, uh, uh, simple example of, uh, uh, of how a 30 year old man or woman may be judged. A man, if not having a job, 30 year old man not having a job, is seen something lacking as a man. Is not a man because his basic essence is that he should be in the public space, should be earning, should be supporting the family, should be the basic earner. So he will be judged because he, whether he will not be judged whether he's married or he's not married. And a 30 year old woman will be judged by this question whether she's married or she's not married because again, whether she has job or she doesn't have a job, that doesn't matter. She might be, that is coincidence. But what is the essence of the thing is that she has to be um, uh, successful so far as her essence in the private affairs concern. So this being so, now when we come back to politics, what do we see that politics is something which lies in the public space. 
and uh, i'll be coming back to this point uh, in the in the end uh, but right now i just wanted to make it clear as to why means why there is a, there is a paradox about and there are so many paradoxes about being women in the electoral politics but most of these paradoxes are related to the patriarchal nature of the society and the context that politics is a resource which is controlled by men and women need to be controlled that is the essence of a patriarchal society and because and then there is a gender division of roles and politics lies in an essential role which is in the public space and which is a space for men and to change that thing and that we are reproducing it in so many ways and uh, so who are the women who are the women who come into politics so first thing what did we, we we have to understand that the women who come to politics are mostly are those and i'm not saying there are lots of exceptions but mostly women in all the south asian countries who join politics who are able to attain uh, important political positions who are um, who are able to become the uh, the heads of the state they they have they come from the political families and you now you can relate it why it is this happens uh, i said that there are there are cases of 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 women coming within politics without the, the 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 without being a part of the political families but you can count their numbers but mostly it is very convenient very easy for a woman to to join politics if she is part of the political family if she is not part of the political family she has to be she has to have the patronage of men i we can give the example of jailalita I mean, Jaya Lalita may not have been in politics if she, I mean, she didn't come from the political family. But, but, but she, she had to, she was a, uh, she had the patronage of of a man. Of course, we find Mamta Banerjee as the pure exception. Uh, she doesn't come either from the political family or uh, she hasn't come with the support of men. On the contrary, she has come there as an individual, and we'll find few examples like her as well. but in most cases women who join politics and electoral politics are coming in continuity with the family politics and it's it's being part or you have been trained into politics in case of uh, uh, of uh, uh, many women they are trained as student leaders and then they they join politics uh, uh, like sushma swaraj was a, was a, was a student leader and and she 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 trained she was trained into politics but these are exceptional women uh again when we have asked to why does it happen that women from political farm families may find it easier to join politics as compared to 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 to, to other women again now you keep that patriarchy in 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 um, uh, background and uh, the control which operate on women the societal gaze the expectation of women that women has got something essential to prove within the private sphere within the family uh then uh, you can you can see that 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 controversy i i think that you have all seen this movie andhi in which I mean the message is what that women can either be a successful politician or she can be a successful housemaker family person means there is always an either or when it comes to women politician there is no either or in case of male politician in case of male politician the family is a support in case of female politician it's like that you may not be able to fulfill your your your, your uh, responsibilities because what is politics politics is a full time more than 24 hours job and uh, when it is a 24 hour job you can imagine how many women can cross that boundary the cross that uh, that 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 limit of being the essential women and take the challenge of being in politics because there is so much at stake what is at stake your family is at stake you might be asked to choose at any point of time whether you want to have a family or whether you want to have a political career there is there is the whole whole question of of and that 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 happens with most of the women in the public uh, life that the easiest way to 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 uh, to counter a woman is to uh, is to uh, is to uh, talk about her in such a manner that there is a character assassination a woman in public life can be easily her character can be assassinated and uh, 
uh, not many women were, are very comfortable with the idea. And then means it, it means crossing a boundary. Means you imagine a, 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 a woman who has got everything. She has got the inkling, she has got the aspirations, she has got the ambition, she wants to be in politics. But then what will be the difficulties for her to enter in politics? There will be too many difficulties. The first difficulty is that crossing that, that mental block that politics is something which is there for, for men. I'll just give a, an example from, from um, means how it's, it becomes a mental block. Uh, I just give my own example that I'm a good driver. I drive the car very well, but at the same time, somehow, somehow I cannot see um, uh, what is this called? The 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 the, the, uh, the road. Uh, I mean the the, the uh, something. What is it called? I'm just getting the, the something to stop the the speed of the car. Uh, I I I'm not able to see that. I'm not able to see that because most of that time my car jumps, and uh, I have asked this question: Why this happens? And this happens not because I'm not a good driver. This happens because I'm not exposed to the road as much as my brother is. And when I compare myself with my brother, how much exposed any boy would be to the road? Means a boy is most of the time, the playtime has been on the road. But the whole, if we compare the road time for a, for a boy, I mean the public space, which men occupy, that space is there right from the childhood till 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 uh, late in life. That's that space is there for women. What is the space? I remember uh, that I've been going to school. In means even if I've been going to a public space, but that space is very limited for me. Means I go with my parents or I go on my own, but I go only that route from my house to the school. Come back. I spend my evening at home. My brother goes out to play. I'm not allowed to go out or I, I do not feel myself that there is a need to go out. Uh, means like it will be it, because of all these things, my exposure to the road is less and so that I cannot see the speed breakers. I wanted to say this speed breaker I cannot see. I, my exposure to speed breaker is so little that I cannot see it. And then I'm, I'm, I, when I'm driving, I'm, I'm invariably jumping over the speed breakers. And somebody tells me, look here, there is going to be a speed breaker. So I feel that this is the same thing about politics. Politics is something, this is a sub public space. So when the question is asked, why are women not, not there? Women are not there because uh, very few women show their interest in politics. If they show in their interest in politics, they join political parties at some point of time. And you can say the parties uh have every political party and this is this is again a case across the countries in south asia every political party will have a woman's wing and you know how is a woman's wing treated within a party it's just an extension it just exists it's there because it is needed to be there but it doesn't have any important significant crucial role to play in the party politics so women are there in the party. Those women within the party also have to have to uh, fight with so many challenges. They will not be allowed to go beyond a point. They are needed for camp for campaigning and mostly campaigning uh, among the women voters. So when you when when there is an election and when you say that okay we want to woo the women voters, so you look for the women leaders and they will be there. Uh, they would they would be there, but. When it comes to the crucial positions within the party, a woman may not be, women may not find that space. And women may not have the time. Women may not have that kind of, that kind of, means the resources which were required to be successful in politics, women may be lacking the resource. What are the resources? You need money. You need uh, a, 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 what we'll say, a, a, a kinship relationship, you need, need a kind of friendship, uh, a kind of click within the party, you need to have that kind of support. And you know, most of the most of these support bases are there because of the there is a men's club, and women cannot join that. And even supposing a woman joins it, and what happens then she she becomes somebody's friend, and then there is a character issue, then she has to defend herself within the within the home. 
then she may not be able to come and uh, be part of the 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 politicking which takes place at at late hours so there are so many problems in which women uh, may not be able to 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 spend that much of energy or they do not have the resources to to uh, fulfill their ambitions within the party but even then some women are able to do that we find every political parties have very committed women who have who have been very very uh, well known women but when it comes to a point beyond that point they cannot rise they do not rise within the parties when it comes to any crucial position you can take the example of all india congress committee our congress working committee and just see that how many women are there or you can take the example of communist party of cpim a very important party in which we see brinda karat is the is the face of women face of that party but then you see that who else how many women are there who are there within so far when it comes to the crucial decision making positions within the party so not many women are there um, and they 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 are not allowed the space uh, so problem lies with the party problem lies with this thing that that because in this situation in which we are that and this this is another paradox we find women in so many spaces we find women when it comes to any 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 um, important issue for example if we, we we go by by the movement politics the the social movements which are taking place it's environment movement uh, it's we can take the name of meda particle uh, or we take the name of vandana shiva these are the women who are leading the um, uh, leading uh, ecologists or leading uh, um uh, women uh, leaders uh, and we can we also know that when it comes to any protest politics any organized protest or unorganized spontaneous protest uh, we we find women are there women face is there but when it comes to the electoral politics the electoral politics does not find so many ways by which to keep the women away so as women they are voters so they have their importance as voters because they are a number but beyond that uh, being voter women as a constituency has not evolved in india we have um, we have a large number of obc we have a obc constituency we have large number of dalits we have a dalit constituency we have large number of minority we have minority constituency constituency is means that there is consolidated groups of people where which political parties like to invest their energies on and uh, consider them as important there is no such thing as women's constituency although we find that for example in the latest election which took place in in, in west bengal state election uh, we heard that the women uh, women's vote did make a significant difference to the way uh, the result was announced so women may be there may be effective but women are seen not seen as a as a significant constituency so there is no gender issue means since women are not a constituency the gender issues are not uh, visible issues and we see that we have seen this thing and i'll just take up to um, uh, more examples and then i finish the talk uh, i just quickly i want to say that 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 when women are not there what happens is that many issues concerning women just go missing from the agenda this was see this has been seen in the panchayat uh, institutions that wherever there are there are greater number of women and women have been effective their women have been seen to be um, bringing issues for example simple issue of availability of drinking water means wherever there were women in the panchayats that they paid more attention on the availability of the drinking water because women have been directly linked with that so they would they in their absence because men had nothing to do with that that important issue was not visible second important thing i want to say is that there is an argument which is made that women are not they're not available women if women are not available how can we bring women to contest elections or to give them positions of power as ministers there is no availability of women so to that i can just give an answer that panchayats did not have availability of women but the panchayati raj system trained women in the process see what happened 
it happened that initially because women were controlling uh, men were controlling politics so women when brought, brought in as proxy candidates in many cases and we know this is still institutionalized in many parts of the country where, where there is a pati panch that is a woman who has been elected but then the, the pati who has been who is actually exercising power but in the process of being there in the power politics women do learn politics i just end up this by giving two examples one is example of rabri devi and other is example of rajiv gandhi both reluctant politicians both were thrown into power positions rajiv gandhi was reluctant he wanted was very happy being a pilot but he was thrown into politics he was not trained at all he got training in the process rabri devi similarly was a very reluctant and politician she was very happy mothering her kids and then uh, being in the kitchen but she was thrown into politics made the chief minister and the and the transformation in a person like rabri devi also 10 years later the kind of confidence that she got to speak to articulate the issue so this happens is that when when you throw somebody it's like swimming it's you have to throw them into politics and in any case we have seen that women do not lack capability of 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 being political leaders they have the capability but they do not have the opportunity and the challenge is very 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 big the challenge is not only how to how to how to uh, fight this this uh, male monopoly over politics but also how to uh, go beyond the social gaze the so social surveillance social uh, social um, uh, uh, taboos which stop women so the challenge is big but we have we have to have women because if we because and and the last thing i'll say that there's a question which is asked why should women be in politics and very different answers given somebody says uh, women should be in politics because uh, uh, they will clean politics i do not think women are in a position to clean politics because politics monopolize men is created a culture which is a culture of dominant culture which is there so when women will join so they will not be able to clean the politics they will be themselves uh, transformed into whatever the culture is and that's what we see women are not different when it comes to um, uh, to behaving in politics as compared to men Uh, so why should women be there my only answer is women should be there because it's the only thing which will justify a democracy if you do not have women in the decision making position you cannot justify a uh, democracy then we'll say that half the population is not represented over there thank you very much thank you so much ma'am for this extensive lecture and i must say uh, you have brought so many different perspectives and not just focusing on india but the entire south asia so from beginning from the upbringing of women to the social cultural barrier that actually enforces her to be in a particular shell and then bringing in different concepts starting from uh, amartya sen into foco it has given us a very comprehensive picture and now without taking much of the time i would like to pass on the mentor to our director uh, so he be Uh, we'll be taking the brief section in the Q&A session. Uh, so, thank you so much, Jigya sir. Um, thank you so much, Rekha, ma'am. Uh, listening to you was, um, and the, the the and the scope of the lecture was um, almost as if you've covered an entire book in in just a small span of time. And only um, experts like you are able to do that, and that too in such an agile. way almost like you know stared the sharing instances and stories and cases uh it was a very very rich and um you know um informative session so thank you very much for that um just um i'd like your permission to uh, just reflect on a few things that i heard a few things that came from my experiences also and uh, a few questions for clarity which i'd like to ask you um on the basis of what i heard so uh, the first thing uh, ma'am that i wanted to bring up um, was uh, when you mentioned that uh, when a woman enters politics um, there are only so many of the women who can get to a position where they're viewed as individuals um as leaders as uh, having risen beyond their identity as a woman 
so that um, that brings to mind um, this whole idea that um, does that necessarily mean that the idea of leadership uh, in itself is maybe um, defined in masculine terms um, i mean when we look at culture um, we all know that um, the mother figure has a certain element a certain amount of authority but again a mother's role is not seen as a leadership role and is often seen as a nurturing and supportive role and if we look at the gender differences and the gender roles that are uh, assigned to the mother and the father or the man and the woman in those terms uh, based on to a certain extent on biology and to a certain extent on obviously uh, social constructs uh, it is interesting to uh, probably reflect over um, how leadership features in our cultural narrative and whether or not there is even any um, gender inclusive dimension to reimagining leadership will that by any chance um, proceed to maybe redefine how what we know and understand as political uh, leadership uh, in that case um, maybe women may find it safer because i was also reflecting that you know um, it, as as a youth activist as somebody who is uh, also growing in the field of uh, policy research i used to consider myself as a leader but then when i ask myself also that if given the chance not coming from a political family will i ever take to politics or will i look at it as a means that i would choose to um, you know wield power or bring about change most women would probably prefer an administrative role like the is uh, to probably getting into politics if they are even meritorious if they know how to manage if they know how to handle a situation and that probably comes from the fact that in politics there is no cultural guarantee that your leadership is going to be attested it's going to be acknowledged that you're actually going to be seen as a leader even if you wield electoral power i mean there are many many leaders who probably have electoral power but they are not taken as seriously and that we see across the borders i mean there are some people like mamta banerji who are exceptional like you said some people like shushma swaraj and then there are some people like say indira gandhi uh, who did have a dynastic element to the supporting ecosystem that uh, led her to be taken as a leader to a to certain extent because she it was i guess timed and it was appropriate it was the culture it was something that other senior party members agreed to but even if we look at how the congress itself diverged how it broke into the congress i and uh, that factionism that also to a great extent was because there was a gender hierarchy working and women probably have that stigma that their leadership is not going to be seen as leadership would like your uh, point of view on that ma'am yeah you are absolutely right uh, you know why indira gandhi was chosen as a successor to shastri uh you know it's very interesting at that point of time when the succession was taking place and uh, lal bahadur shastri died um, i mean just suddenly uh there was a very strong group of male leaders that was called a syndicate uh, led by kamraj um, uh, patel they were the four four five of five of them actually they were very very strong uh, people and uh, they were they were trying to keep a man away from uh, being the prime minister and the man was morarji desai means it was a iron man like means he was a very very strong man and they didn't want morarji desai to be the prime minister because he was seen as a very very strong person so to keep him away they wanted a somebody uh, somebody who is not very assertive somebody very fragile somebody who would be under their control so indira gandhi was chosen as a weak candidate it's in the process that she then the kind of challenges that she had to face means from 1965 to 1969 when the split took place in the congress and the time that indira gandhi has emerged as the leader of congress i it was a huge challenge and then she had to assert herself in each moment so Uh, that that explains that for women to be a leader you are absolutely right the concept of leader as i said that indira gandhi is said to be the man she is a man of the congress party she is not seen as a woman of the party 
so leadership is a concept which is a masculine concept and uh, indira gandhi's position explains a lot that that she was she was she was seen as a uh, very very fragile weak personality so so she was chosen and uh, means if when and then she had the capability and then she took the challenge and then she asserted herself and that again also proves that if women uh, is able to meet that challenge cross those boundaries cross those barriers then she can emerge as good or as bad a, a politician as as men are so so it's again you have to to learn in the process uh, uh, so far as uh, as you saying the yes i would ag agree with you again on this uh, for women like you uh, or even i can say including me also given the choice maybe i think we find the politics to be quite inconvenient quite inconvenient maybe administration is more convenient easier but politics is is very very inconvenient for for the traditional roles gendered roles that women have to imbibe and live and prove all the time in that context politics is very very inconvenient and one can can should say that the women who are who are there are really are facing all those challenges and we must appreciate the kind of challenge they are facing but uh, certainly it's as of now it is a masculine concept leadership uh, it it creates all kinds of problems for women as of now but again going by the by the by the situation i said i i gave always give the example of rabri devi since indira gandhi was a very uh, different personality altogether differently exposed but if rabri devi could learn in politics and if those proxy women in panchayat and learners i just i tell my students see what happens in the process first time her husband comes and says that you have to sign because ultimately it is the thumb impression or signature of the women punch which counts the the man cannot sign it so when he comes to women to to asking her for her signature women understand this is my power and this is my power over my husband and she can negotiate and this is the process beginning of the process of negotiation said that that women learn that how politics brings them to the process of negotiation and in the process of learning it's a huge learning process but there is always a hope that yes they will learn um ma'am uh, added to this um even if you look at mamta banerjee's rise she also rose in her own stride as a politician after the trinamool congress broke away from the congress and uh, the way she managed it was uh, epic but uh, one more thing uh, that strikes me as interesting is also uh, the leadership of women within political parties who do not exactly take to electoral positions but they wield a lot of power in terms of uh, wielding the political parties or at least in terms of political mobilization now uh, if you look at for instance sonia gandhi i mean she willfully knowing that she is of foreign descent uh she knew that there would be contestations but she had taken up quite an important position in um uh, ruling the roost of the party and of dictating a lot of terms and um uh, managing and um you know uh being a decision maker in a certain sense in terms of how the party's agenda would go forward and that is also seen as a certain kind of leadership though not probably would not be counted as electoral leadership and um interestingly i mean i remember when studying history um i see these patterns repeated in our indian history because if you look at nur jahan during the mughal period she was also of foreign descent and someone who was uh from an aristocratic family but was not exactly welcome into the household of the emperor as someone who could rule the roost but she did not just the zanana but also uh, the entire empire from behind the wave so uh, my second question to you would be that when we look at women's political participation or active role in um, actually negotiating terms actually influencing agenda do you think that it is uh, necessarily through only electoral participation that they're able to do that or maybe people like sonia gandhi and uh, maybe other women within parties uh, who are not perhaps highlighted who do not actually seek the limelight or take the limelight for whatever reasons uh, they have also have much of a say in uh, setting the terms and the agenda 
because how a party's manifesto, like you mentioned, that um, most of the um, gender inclusive discussions in manifestos and in manifesto promises are often not there because there are not many women setting that those terms. But what if there are more pol uh, politically active and um, important women who are knowing how to negotiate terms from behind the wheel? And even if for whatever structural inequality and cultural reasons, they do not come to the front, does that necessarily mean that we cannot, that we have to say that they are, there is less political participation um, of women in leadership in the political process? Your comments on that? Uh, I would say that doesn't make any difference because Sonia Gandhi is also an exception as Noor Jahan would have been. Means again, uh, behind the scene, women who are powerful, there are very few women. And again, you can see that why Sonia Gandhi is powerful, uh, was powerful, and why, because again, this has to do something, again, patriarchal, gendered context of Congress politics. Means the politics which is coming, traveling from uh, Mrs. Gandhi to Rajiv Gandhi, Rajiv Gandhi not being there, then she being his wife, and then the whole context of the Congress depending on uh, on, on on the legacy of uh, of of this family. So uh, Sonia Gandhi is an exceptional woman. Although again, I'll say that she has proved her uh, individual leadership. Uh, uh, and it's not only that she proved; she actually was able to. Uh, to 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 uh, overcome uh, the challenge of uh, as you said that she is a foreigner and uh, that that was the major challenge and she has been she has uh, she she was been seen as a leader in her own right but uh, that doesn't make any difference because sonia gandhi is one uh, and uh, exceptional person behind the scene if there were more uh, women behind the scene maybe we could have uh, analyzed that case uh, but uh, still, I would feel like uh, as a person who teaches a political, who is a student of political science and uh, believes in democracy, I would see that I would prefer women to be there in the center of anything which is happening rather than behind the back. And ma'am, one last question I have is, um, we know that uh, a lot of people talk about reservation of women in politics as much as that is extremely important but uh, do you uh, think that uh, the reservation of women in politics makes the women somewhat vulnerable to this idea of being pawns or puppets in the hands of men who use their political participation as a support element to only garner their own power because if because one thing which is still noted and in grassroots politics all the more is that if you go and ask how many women are contesting an a general seat on at, at an equal level of competition because of merit because of their background you would seldom find any i mean women also choose to take the easy route of just taking the reserved seats and beyond the reserved seats you wouldn't see women contesting on an equal footing with men so if we even talk about a gender parity within the electoral process, how far are we from that space? And um, despite whatever uh, privileges we are given in terms of reservation, though I would hardly call it a privilege, um, but uh, where do you see this um, narrative turning over time? Do you see there's a scope that maybe women one day would also equally contest the general seats and not just go for the reserved seats? Will they have the power? Will they have the scope? Or is that even an, or how far is India from that um, even imagined possibility? So I think whole of South Asia would have the same problem. Uh, and I think your question itself has an answer. You said that women are still not able to contest and generally. I, you said they do not contest. I say they do not have the choice. They do not have the space they do not have the opportunity so uh, so it's if the women are not able to contest in the general seat which means that they need to uh, the, the the whole scenario the challenges within the party challenges within the society challenges 
then the means it's a it's a it's a it's a huge challenge. So to means the first minimum, and it is minimum. A reservation is the minimum. It's not the ultimate uh, solution. It's a minimum is required that let the women be there, and only then they will be. You know what is happening right now? The women who are there are not bringing the means. They are not uh, able to be there for all the time. Are they not able? to sustain their cells uh, many of them uh, also they are not able to use their position to bring more women means we can ask this question how many women has so sonia gandhi brought in congress how many women has uh, mahbuba mufti brought in pdp how many women has did indira gandhi bring in uh, congress so so this this does not work that way means the um, so there are lots and lots of challenges and uh, i find the only one way to overcome those challenges that women need to acquire that critical mass have 50% of women in the parliament by reservation and then see the how the how the whole scenario changes and that's what is scaring the male politicians means how the the scenario will be changed even if there is a 33% as i said let there be 50% women in the parliament lots of change in the parliament so after that we will have to see means what other things change but that is minimum that i find uh, in south asian scenario nothing else other than bringing them by force by pushing them to 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 that uh, swimming pool means they won't come otherwise thank you so much ma'am um, any last minute reflections advice uh, anything you want to add uh, to all the women listening to us and also to the young men about um, maybe how we can make a more um, uh, gender diverse and gender inclusive uh, uh, political uh, participation process anything anything any words of wisdom ma'am i would just say that gender is something like uh, is something like a, it, it, it's something that has to lived you have to live gender so i think as a group you can contribute a lot by sensitizing men and women into because it doesn't necessarily mean that only women are gender sensitive sometimes women are very very gender insensitive and sometimes men are more uh, um, uh, open to gender sensitivity so since you are a group and uh, you have the scope over here i would like you to to have more uh, such workshops or uh, where where gender sensitivity about so many things can be evolved and developed i think you can contribute a lot it has to be an ongoing process thank you so much ma'am and we will definitely reach out to you for more on advice on that uh, having said that we've come to the close of today's session thank you so much for your time ma'am now i'd pass on the mantle to my colleague akil mr akil rashid uh, to present the vote of thanks akil over to you thank you soni uh, yeah before i present the vote of thanks i would like to make an observation directly inspired from today's lecture uh, as we know uh, uh, in present times a lot of i'm talking about jammu and kashmir so a lot of women uh, can be seen joining political parties or in the past uh, uh, a few women were elected to the office also they were uh, elected to power also and uh, what what i i i wanted to uh, mention here is uh, that it's it's their contribution which makes their role uh, important or uh, or significant as long as uh, they are not able to deliver or allowed to deliver their their role uh, role remains insignificant uh, i will i will uh, give you an example here uh, in kashmir you have you have these inauguration stones inaugurations are usually done by the male uh, politicians you will hardly find any inauguration stone here in kashmir uh, on which a women politicians name is written so uh, Uh, it's it's not just they are they are present in the politics. I I I think there are a lot of number lot number of women who are present in the politics who are who are uh, who are constituting the important important positions in the politics in the political parties. But their their active activities are very less. Like you like you talked about like you said that Indira Gandhi or uh, like uh, Sonia Gandhi or Mahbuba Mufti. Why are they able to bring how 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 far they have been able to bring more women in the, into the politics? Have they tried to bring 
more women into the politics and uh, it's in the in the uh, what 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 i uh, what i wanted to say is that it's always there uh, the, the, the women the women who are there it's it's their activities it's their contribution which matters in the end so uh, with that uh, i would uh, like to uh, uh, like to present a vote of thanks and before that uh, uh, like, like i said uh, we can pick many interesting facts from today's lecture on gender disparity in uh, electoral politics of south asia but but i would like to mention a few that uh, stood out from the rest uh, one is uh, politics is controlled and monopolized by men and second uh, women are still seen as liability and men as assets i think these are the facts that need to be seriously pondered if the gender disparity in politics is to be addressed. Uh, so with that, on behalf of the uh, JKPI and on my own behalf, I would like to thank uh, Rekha Chaudhary for delivering a very powerful, very uh, evocative, uh, very insightful lecture on gender disparity in uh, electoral politics of South Asia. Uh, we look forward to more such lectures that can further address the issue that's hardly discussed in social and political circles. Uh, that's all for today in before you in, in, uh, conclude uh, lecture series thank you and good evening thank you